Welcome to the Spring 2021 Commencement Ceremony for the College of Arts and Humanities at the University of Maryland. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, families, friends, loved ones, faculty and staff, all who are joining us wherever you may be. Welcome to this important celebration. I am Bonnie Thornton Dill, professor in the Harriet Tubman Department of Women, Gender and Sexuality Studies and Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities. First, I wanna ask everyone to stop, take a deep breath and release your biggest sigh of the year. Whew. We made it to the end of the 2021 academic year, to the end of the weirdest year of our collective lives and to graduation day. Congratulations. Commencement is a rite of passage, a threshold between past and future, a passageway that separates who you were before from who you are becoming. In 2020, however, you have experienced perhaps the most profound marker between an earlier life and a new future that you may ever experience in your lifetime. The twin pandemics of COVID-19 and a new reckoning with historic US struggle against systemic racism. You will spend much of your life reflecting upon and seeking to understand how your college experience marked by these watershed events affects your future. In a recent speech, a friend of mine told the following story. Her nine-year-old son came home from school one day, very excited because he had begun a unit on history. After telling her some of the things he'd learned, he asked, Mommy, what is history anyway? She replied, history is the stories people tell about their lives. Wow, he replied, that means I can make history. Well, what history have you made here at Maryland? What are the stories you will tell about your life in these trying times, about who you were in college and before the pandemics, about who you are becoming and how you navigated the options and opportunities that came during college and after graduation. First, on behalf of the College of Arts and Humanities, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be part of your story. As faculty and staff at the university, we are honored to have had the privilege of helping you compose these chapters of your story. We hope that the combination of our expertise and passion for the subjects we study and teach, our belief in the power of education to transform lives, and your willingness to open yourselves to new information and understandings makes your Maryland story one that reveals your hard work and dedication, that it is alive with detail, texture, and nuance, and that it indicates how your thirst for knowledge will grow into a commitment to lifelong learning. We are excited to celebrate with you as you step into a new phase of your life. Whether you are graduating cum laude, or as some would say, thank you, laude, we know that you are ready, world ready. Now, how do I say that with such confidence? Because I know that we are celebrating a group of people who are among the most incredible cohorts of students in the university's history. Students who have persevered through unimaginable circumstances for the past 14 months, 
to participate in only the third, and dare I say, hopefully the last, virtual commencement for the college. Through unstable internet connections, dropped calls, noisy pets, or family members appearing unexpectedly on your Zoom screen, among other remote or hybrid learning frustrations, you persisted. Through feelings that ranged from fear, anxiety, sadness, and depression, to empathy, compassion, joy, and delight even while connecting remotely with classmates, you persisted. To get here, you have adapted well in the face of, of sustained adversity, trauma, and stress. And your ability to persist has empowered you to grow and even improve your life along the way. That is the process that the American Psychological Association describes as resilience. Know and claim the fact that you are resilient. I think about resilience as a muscle because it becomes stronger the more you exercise it. The stories you tell about your life will, I'm sure, have lots of examples of when, where, and how you exercised that muscle. These stories will also convey how as students of the arts and humanities, you gained some very important habits of mind, ways of thinking and learning that amplified your ability to work that resilience muscle. Our graduates say it best when talking about how they feel their RHU degree has made them ready, resilient, and irrelevant for this ever-changing world. So now, let's hear from them. I am very excited to graduate. It's bittersweet. I'm gonna miss it a great deal and I'm gonna be very nostalgic. Being an art here has really helped me to come out of my shell. Naturally, I'm feeling a little bit anxious to get out there. The art here side of my education has really always made me turn towards the more human side. I think my art here degree has made me resilient, especially this past year, by showing me that perseverance is really significant. Theater and dance is really based on being in a space with other people and bouncing things off one another. And not having that in-person connection is really difficult. Even though it was virtual, you could have people from all over the country come together and work on new work. And it sort of just goes to show that we can be a part of new work and exciting work, even if we're not together. In today's world that has become increasingly fragmented, increasingly polarized, it's become more important than ever to be able to communicate with people, to be able to talk, and more importantly, to be able to listen. And I think that my RQ degree has really placed that focus on communication. My philosophy degree has prepared me for the ever-changing world because it's helped me understand that everyone's opinions, perspectives, and arguments can be valid. When I started out as a freshman, I definitely was a bit shyer. And I didn't really think that what I was saying was valid or could be backed up or people would agree with me. I've become a lot more confident in talking out loud in class, talking out loud in public. If I hear something that makes me question um, someone's morals or what they believe in, I definitely feel more comfortable in asserting myself. I feel like they have given us uh, the resources and the support that we need to um, overcome whatever obstacles may come in our way, especially in this COVID pandemic. In my freshman year and sophomore year, I went to Italy to look at different ancient places, museums, going to ancient sites. And it was a really amazing experience for me just to be in that presence. Taking a class with grad students has also helped with confidence and um, making me feel like I'm ready for graduate school. In the current world that we're living in, which we face so much uncertainty. I've gained skills where I've become more confident with myself, where I've improved my communication skills, where I can see the world through the lens of empathy, and I can really approach problems in a human way. 
I came to the United States in 2017. At that point in my life, I was very lost because I had already started my degree in Venezuela and I had to completely drop it because of the a political and social and economic problems in my country. And I came here with my family, hoping to start a business, restart my degree. And the University of Maryland definitely granted me that opportunity. No sculpture ever ends exactly how you imagined it. The idea changes and you have to adapt to that. So new, better ideas come along that transform your original vision and problems come up that make you rethink your execution. And art who has prepared me for these challenges, not just by teaching me how to create, but how to think and solve problems creatively. There are certain things that I like to say in my pieces, but I think I also like the viewer to read into the pieces and see different materials that juxtapose with one another. One of the ways that my music education has really helped prepare me is by emphasizing the importance of diversity. For example, in my music education classes, I've gotten the chance to work with a lot of different kinds of communities, and this has really helped build up my own perspectives. Another big aspect that has helped me a lot, especially during this past year, is seeing all of the different creative approaches that my professors, colleagues, and professionals that have actually come in to talk with us have taken to sort of keep their career going during the past year. I can see myself using all kinds of different technology and tools available to me to you know, connect better with my students and engage them more. Uh, within the Department of French and Italian, I have not only honed my language skills, allowing me to communicate with people from all different backgrounds, cultures, and walks of life, but as an instructor too. I was able to help them realize their own strengths, realize their own resilience, and work past any kind of fears they might have had about speaking in another language, making mistakes. Leading the study abroad program in Montpellier in 2018 allowed me to see that in action. I was able to see my students in a foreign country using their new language skills and succeeding at it. I came into um, Maryland as a public policy major when I saw American Studies and saw that it had such a um, devoted value to civil rights and social justice. Um, it was kind of the perfect avenue to not only gain the policy side, but also gain the actual applicable side into the world. When something happens in the world that is wrong, don't try to move on with your life like it is right. The voice within you that says, this is not okay, is a direct call from the basic goodness of your spirit. I'm doing a program called Avoda next year, um, which is pretty much the Jewish version of AmeriCorps. So working for a nonprofit that helps um, formerly incarcerated people um, to like reintegrate into society. My RHU degree prepares me for an ever-changing world by equipping me with the intellectual breadth and depth of knowledge uh, to interact with different and diverse ideas. In all my courses, uh, specifically in religious studies, there are many students of very different backgrounds. I, I would be probably one of them. Hearing the personal stories of people who uh, practice these religions, as well as the academic sources and studies done by universities or other places, really formulated my understanding of not only these religions, but also my understanding and um, sort of formulated my view of the, um, the outside world. When I first got into ARHU, I didn't really have any experience with, you know, anything that w that wasn't by like a really old white person who lived well before like electricity existed. The variety of classes that I've taken in ARHU that are all writing based but require different styles of writing for different kind of topics, I think has really made me a well-rounded communicator. Whether it's like you know like uh, an LGBT uh, <clears throat> graphic novel or whether it's you know like a, a in the Black Arts era, like piece of poetry. These diverse reading experiences have given me bits and pieces of different cultures and times throughout the world that I think really helped me cultivate my own kind of, um, kind of style. What I do feel I learned from taking women's studies and also minoring in Black women's studies is being able to be a critical thinker. It focused more on learning from people, not just from like an academic perspective, but just also from like the many different ways of learning, especially when we looked at a lot of work from community organizations and nonprofits that are working directly with the communities that we're studying. I feel like I'm more prepared to um, learn how to close read and also just um, 
appreciate like the the approach that people have when writing. It become very good at looking at small details in works or in articles and figuring out again like what they might mean or why they're important and how they um, build up to like an entire to the entire whole. I've also learned how to kind of integrate art and technology. So I'm studying the Etruscan underworld spirit Vanth. I use this software called Omeka and so that allowed me to make very interesting graphs and tables that could further make my data more accessible. Once I graduate I want my database to be open source and accessible to any scholars that want to research more about Vanth and her role in the funerary canon. History is not just about memorizing facts. It's also about teaching a way of thinking and apply them to the pressing problems of uh, today's world. When we're told things by our civil servants, when we're told things by our leaders generally, it is very important to be able to take the information you're getting and critically analyze it and use your own independent thought to come to conclusions about that. A history degree prepares students to think critically about the present using the tools of the past. We're not entirely alone in our struggles, that the current perhaps quests we've seen for justice and equity and more citizens' rights are uh, eternal struggles that have been fought by many people before us and will be fought by many people after us. What is past is prologue. Bon courage to the monde. Je vous souhaite un futur plein d'opportunités. I believe the arts and humanities have really formed who I am as a person. And once you have that sense of self, it will be easier to step out into the world. Everyone has a story and, you know, your voice being heard is like super important. And we can all have conversations and discussions in order to get to the better conclusion about how we can change the world for the better. These graduates' words are very moving and fill me with compassion, pride, and hope. Their reflections demonstrate so clearly the talents, vision, and commitments they are taking into the world. Graduates, as you transition into an economy that's only slowly beginning to recover from this pandemic, I want to assure you that with confidence like that conveyed here, you will not merely survive the challenges ahead, you will thrive. Your arts and humanities education has prepared you to be versatile and adaptable in a rapidly changing world. You have the knowledge and skills employers seek. You write well, read critically, listen actively, communicate effectively, and think creatively. You are culturally aware and linguistically adept. You've gained empathy and a marked depth of understanding through this period. You are world wise. What does this mean? It means that you have learned to interpret and contextualize current controversies and debates as both a product of US history and culture and is part of the broad sweep of human civilization. It means that you are prepared to interrogate the narrative arc of human experiences and analyze their ethical implications. It means that you are aware of the immense power of words and understand how the legacy of the past is shaping the present. You've explored creative ways to convey a variety of experiences and to express a breadth of human emotions. And you do so in ways that can bring people together to see and hear one another across differences and begin process the process of developing empathy. You speak with knowledge about identity, belonging and cultural expression and you are prepared to become leaders in addressing the many challenges before you to end racism, ensure social justice, facilitate cross-cultural communication, implement diversity and inclusion, build a sustainable planet, and establish equitable public health programs and policies. In other words, your studies have provided you a broad variety of equipment, 
to use as you continue to exercise your resiliency muscles in both your professional and personal life. It's true that this pandemic may further elongate the timeline for getting to your next step, but your intellectual breadth and flexibility will help you see and create opportunities for yourself and for others. So as you leave the Maryland Terrapin community and create the next chapters of your story, I encourage you to do so keeping five themes in mind. Allowing these themes to guide your narrative, I believe will deepen your resilience, help you make a good living, and most important, ensure that you create a meaningful an impactful life. These themes are, first, purpose that feeds your mind. Second, passion that fills your spirit. Third, persistence to accomplish your goals. Fourth, patience with yourself and others during these very trying times. And finally, fifth, when you encounter pain, use the passion and emotional intelligence that grows out of that experience for the purpose that will improve humankind. Congratulations and best wishes.